Hey everybody, Mark Heaps for PSD Toots. I wanted to show you guys a quick project that I had to knock out the other day with a very, very fast turnaround. A friend of mine had asked me if I would create a graphic for a car show that he was organizing and wanted something that could be used as a postcard mailer or maybe even a poster. And this was the sketch that he had sent over when we talked about it on the phone. Now, I literally had only a few hours to be able to make this, so uh, this was sort of the way that things broke down. He sent this sketch over, and we talked about it, and basically, uh, he had said that he wanted to have this blueprint background, and, you know, thought, well, something like Mythbusters, you know, you see those guys all the time sketching out the story of whatever mad invention they're working on. He liked that idea, and it kind of tied into the whole hands-on uh, mechanical side of, of what these guys do with their cars. Then he wanted to have a title, which was part of that, kind of looked like it was sketched in here. And then there were the vintage car picks that he wanted to have run across the middle. Um, kind of looks like a river stream of car photos. Now, the, the trick part to this was not only did we want a photo of a vintage car in each of these, but we wanted each photo to be treated as if it was aged from a different era or a different decade. So that was kind of the, the hard part, considering that it had to be produced within a couple of hours. And then down here at the bottom, your typical poster information. We had your, your classic welcome sort of text, uh, your friendly text. And then over here, the event details, like the when, the where, what time, uh, etc. Okay, so uh, let's take a quick look at, uh, at how I actually did that. So here was the final piece. I just want to walk you guys through the layers that I have in here. Um, this was the 50% gray background with some black text that I had merged, and I ran it through a blueprint filter that is a part of Filter Forge, and it gave me this cool sort of Mythbusters blueprint sketchy effect. The textures, the lines, even the fonts were all handled by the plugin. And I had done this just by merging the layers, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, in the middle here, I started bringing in all of these photos that I had taken from a previous car show and applied a different filter from Filter Forge to each of these so that they each look uniquely aged from a different era. So we've got the vintage old cracked photo that you might find in the attic, the one that's been in the photo album or in a frame that's been exposed to too much sun, had some light leak. Um, over here, we've got one that was overexposed and burned a little on the edges. And then here's the classic sort of Polaroid look with the texture and the the out of focus grain, right? And then, you know, beneath this, I just painted some boxes with some shadows that were blurred inside of Photoshop. From here, I had added some placeholder text with a handwritten sketch sort of font just to make it a little bit more personable. And then here were the event details put on the other side. Then the last thing I did here, just because I remember it from all the Polaroids I saw as a kid, I just did some handwriting with blue and added a little bit of a mask so it looked like there was some handwriting over here on the side of this Polaroid. So it gave me a pretty cool look. It was produced really fast. And basically, I managed to produce a wide array of looks and treatments in under one to two hours. So let's take a look at how some of these things are done. So here's how I produced that blueprint text background. I basically took a canvas and filled it with 50% gray. So if I just went to edit fill, you can bring that up by pressing shift F5. And in here, you have one of the content options is 50% gray. Press OK to that. Make sure your blending mode is normal and opacity is 100%, of course. And you get 50% gray as your background. Now, on top of this, I typed that word classic car show. So for this, we'll just type text. Okay, so there's my solid black text right here. Let's just make this a little bit bigger. You guys can see it better. And then a couple ways you could do this. You could merge this together as a copy, and then that's something you could apply the filter to, or you could actually convert this into a smart object. So I'm just going to do a merge copy for right now. I don't really need to worry about this being editable later, um, but it is a good practice. You should use smart objects if you're worried about uh, making sure you can edit things at a later point. So let me just go up to Filter here and come down to where I have Filter Forge installed. Choose Filter Forge 3. And this launches a separate application, but it does connect back to Photoshop as a plugin. Now, up here at the top, underneath the creative, you see I have an option for blueprint drawing. Now, Filter Forge is really powerful. There's all kinds of really cool effects and filters that are built into this, uh, this application. Um, what's really nice is they've done a great job in the UI of separating the categories of filters, the filters that are in each category, and then each of these filters has a series of presets 
and then the custom settings for that filter. So let's uh, just quickly pick blueprint drawing here. You'll see this starting to convert. It's rendering it out. And then down here in the bottom, we have six factory presets for those blueprints. Some are heavier lines, heavier burns, lighter textures. And if we want to, we can even go into the settings and we could change things like edge width, uh, the type of lines that we have, the contrast of the lines, the line thickness. I might decide those are a little too thick, so I'll just reduce that. And then you can get into the type of grid, grid density, like how many squares do you want to have, or even the texture roughness of the paper. So there's a lot of options inside of every filter of Filter Forge to explore and play with for your creativity. Now that's that's pretty neat, but uh, I actually liked the thicker lines a little bit more there. So let's just go in here and uh, bring that back up. And when you're happy with it, press apply. So I'm going to go ahead and let that render just straight back to Photoshop. And there you can see the filter was applied. So it's done a really cool job of creating the texture, adding my lines, creating that brush stroke style, uh, incorporating the text really, really fast. And I didn't have to spend the time looking up these textures, looking up these brushes, or producing these brushes, or drawing something and scanning it to make it. I could just execute a treatment really quickly. Now, I understand the importance of being able to make things yourself, but when you're in a time crunch, this is a really high quality option um, that saves you a whole lot of time. Okay, let's look at the next effect. So here's a close-up of the first car you saw in the design earlier, and this is the one that I had treated with that old photo effect. In fact, I made a duplicate of this layer just so you could see it when I turned it on and off. So here, FilterForge added all of this toning for me, all of these cracks and textures, and there's even these really cool uh, ambient sort of aged burns that look cloudy that are added as a texture over the top of the paper. So it doesn't look like it's in the density of the photograph or the, or the shape of the objects of the photograph. It literally lives on the surface, which I think is really nice touch. It's normally something that I would have to hand render. So to produce this effect, all we had to do was go back into Filter Forge again. And now when we get into the filter, we look over at the categories on the left, come down to Photo, and you'll see there's an option here for Old Photo. Now, there are, again, a lot of photo effects in here, and these are sort of remnant of what we're seeing with uh, cell phones and smartphones. People are using Instagram and Hipstamatic, and you know people are trying to reproduce this style a lot. So in here, we have all of those options in one tool. Again, we've got some presets down at the bottom here for vintage aging and toning, and uh, I might try this one. It looks like it's a little bit lighter, and it's got some really nice cracking on it. But if, again, if you wanted to be able to change any of this, just come underneath settings. You can pick the toning for your photograph, the contrast, the vignette that you're seeing, the amount of grain in the picture, stains, the scratches, the scratch length even. So this isn't like your typical filter where you're seeing a mask be dropped over the top of the photo. All of this is being rendered with a control uh, to what degree you want to see it rendered over the original image. So if we like that, we'll just go ahead and press apply. Let's see that get applied. And there you have it. It also did a really nice job of adding this custom frame for us, which has these really weathered edges around the outside. It almost looks like a, a tear out from a newspaper uh, for old photo, which I think is a, a really cool treatment as well. Um, so that one's a little different than the one that I had used in the design. You can sort of compare there. But both would have worked perfectly fine for the design in the end. So you're probably starting to get the idea of how I managed to knock out this design so quickly. Um, here's another example of the photo that I turned into a Polaroid. Um, the filter is actually called Memoroid as a part of FilterForge. And uh, it does a really good job producing the texture and the vignette and the grain that is really remnant of original Polaroids. Now, you could just spend so much time inside of Filter Forge choosing any one of these 4,000 plus effects that they have um, and then going into the presets or even going more finite and dialing in the settings. So I just want to show you guys a few of these with this particular uh, image. So here's that Memroid. It's version 2. That's what gives us that Polaroid effect. You can see that starting to render a preview over here on the right. But they also have some of the more popular uh, types of settings and effects that are being used a lot right now um, trending in the design community. We've got like Lomography, which is really, really popular, which is sort of the Holga Diana toy camera look. Um, and that just looks great. I love the coloring on that. It's got that purple 
tinted vignette going around the outside. Colors are all cross-processed. Um, they've also got the super toy camera called FOMO, which this is really, really fun as well. So there you can see the preview of that FOMO super toy camera look, which is really, really cool. It's a very sort of analog looking treatment with some nice film grain and some color cross-processing and a little bit of a light leak going on in here. Um, the last one on here that I always like to show everyone that uh, that I've demoed Filter Forge for is uh, this analog camera effect, which is really cool also. So this sort of reminds me of my old Rolly Flex wind-on uh, camera, top view camera that used to collect so much dust on the lens and you know, on exposures on the inside of the camera, um, but it gave it a lot of character and a lot of grit. So Filter Forge has all of these bases covered. And again, if you wanted to change anything, you've got custom settings for every single filter. And every single filter has its own custom setup because in Filter Forge, you're allowed to edit and create your own filters. Now that's something that we could talk about uh, for a whole other time, but uh, just know that if there was something in a filter that you wanted, you could probably add it as the engineer of your own filters. Beyond editing the filter yourself with the filter editor, if you wanted to look for more filters, you could just press on this link at the top right of the application uh, window that says Filter Library, Download More Filters. And that will take you over to the Filter Forge website where you could just do a search under any category you want. So I might type Retro. And here it'll load a series of options for filters that I could just click on, like Toy Cam here. And immediately you could press this link that says open this filter in Filter Forge and it'll add it directly to the application from the web browser, which is a really cool feature. Okay, so there's my final project, a quick breakdown on how I did it in such a short amount of time and giving you some insight into using the right tool for the job, Filter Forge saved me again. Thanks guys, hope you have fun uh, making your graphics out there and playing with pixels.